going on Fader Culture? I'm Adrian Barone and we're back with another tutorial. Today we're going to be running down the steps on how to do a low fade while still leaving the C cups on my buddy Christian here. But before we get started guys, hit that subscribe button as we have been doing a giveaway at every 100,000 subscriber and that 400,000 subscriber milestone is right around the corner. So please do so guys, hit that thumbs up button and let's jump right into this tutorial. All right guys, thank y'all so much for tuning in to another tutorial. As usual, all the steps that I will be doing on this haircut will be in the description in case y'all wanna follow along that way. Alongside with all the tools that I'll be using on this video will be linked in the description below. All right, so to start off, we're gonna slightly start damping the hair. And a tip that I do have for this is go ahead and add a little bit of leave-in conditioner to your water, guys. It's gonna leave a smoother finish on it. And starting with the very front, we're gonna begin our trim. And take note how I do pick up a part of that previous cut section alongside with the new section to be used as my guideline as I do work my way back. Very simple guys, like I mentioned, this is just a slight trim. He wanted to leave most of the length on the top as he does comb it back. Now grabbing our new section and just repeating that same process. And one thing I do want y'all to take note on guys is notice the gap right here in between my fingers you're gonna notice how it starts to close as I approach the back of the head. And the reason being is because I always want that front part a lot longer as we do give them that pompadour look, especially when your clients like their hair combed back. I think it's a nice finish. And now coming in horizontal sections just to cross check my work. Again guys, we are approaching that 400,000 subscriber milestone, which we highly, highly appreciate. So stay tuned for the details. Of course, we are going to do a giveaway. It's probably going to be cash that y'all can either use on our merch or go ahead and buy yourself some tools and begin y'all's barber journey. And one thing I want y'all to take notice on guys is when your client wants his hair combed back, you want to be easy on the parietal ridge and crown area. Do not go too, too short as your as the hairs are just going to want to stick up and out. You want to leave a moderate length and to locate our temple peak area as usual to begin our fade. Our first guy line is going to begin way under that temple peak area, almost right above the ear. And we're going to start slightly dropping it as we approach the back of the ear. And yes, my clippers are zero gapped, which I highly suggest you do. There is a video down in the description below on how we zero gap our clippers. Make sure you check that out, guys. And just be easy with the guideline, guys. There's no reason to dig them in. Try to be as soft as possible. It's going to make your life a lot easier when we come back down and start erasing them. Now for the next guideline, we're going to open up the lever and we're going to take it up about a finger's width. Just make sure that your guy line does run parallel to the one underneath it. That way your fade is consistent throughout. And again, just keeping a small brush on your opposite hand to then clean the canvas after every few strokes. Now with my number one guard lever completely open, we're gonna continue the process and create our third guy line. Take note how I don't go all the way into that temple peak area as I do want to leave a little bit of length when it comes down to start curving them and really edging them up. Again, just make sure that you're easy on the wrist and that it is parallel to the one underneath. Now with my number two guard lever completely open, we're gonna continue that process.
Now for the last card guys, we're gonna use a number three. Lever still completely open. If you did notice, the lever stays completely open as we set up our canvas. The only thing that changes is the guards. And one thing I do want y'all to take note on is how much weight there is on the edge. That is due to the fact that his last fade was taken up a little higher than usual. But we're coming back and giving him that low fade and we're gonna go ahead and let that parietal ridge and crown area grow out. But since there is a lot of weight, this is gonna be the last guard that we'll be using and we're just gonna go ahead and use thinning shears over comb to help blend that hair in. And you always wanna recomb the hair to neutralize it in its position. That way you can just see if you need to cut more or you're good on that spot and keep moving forward. And we're pretty much done now setting up the canvas guys by now you should have that first guideline that we created with the zero second that we created with the half and third that we created with the one guard lever completely open we're going to start with that one and work our way down using my one and a half guard we're going to close that lever just slightly putting it into a three-fourths position it's basically somewhere in between halfway and fully open and we're going to go ahead and attack that top guideline if you were easy on the wrist with that two and a half and three and a half guard, that two and a half should have blended right into that three. The only guidelines that you should have would be the ones that I pointed out. And this three fourths position guys is of course a rule of thumb. If you feel like you need to open it just slightly or close it slightly, then go ahead and do so guys do not be afraid to try and experiment and do new things and now for the second guideline coming down we're going to use the half guard and yet we're still going to keep that lever in that three-fourths position And this step does create a line right above it, but do not take this half guard up any higher as we will come back right now with the one guard and go ahead and start to remove that. Now for that faint line that I mentioned, we're gonna use the one, the one guard we're going to keep the lever in that three-fourths position and go ahead and attack that line. And as you could notice how I'm using mainly just the last two, three teeth of the clipper to get in those tighter areas. That's just to erase those tighter areas, those dark spots, and yet not take the fade up any higher. And always take note in the direction of the grain, guys. You always want to be cutting against the grain when it comes to fading. Again, guys, these steps are in the description below. I hope they've been helping y'all. We've been doing these steps for years. We've just been doing them on different haircuts and different textures just to show y'all that they're very universal and they work on almost every single haircut. Now for that last line guys that we created with the zero, it's going to take a three step process starting with the lever close, we're going to open it halfway and we're going to finish off with it completely open. Working on just one section at a time, I'm going to go ahead and focus on this left side of his head. Just because this last line is very tedious, I like to give it as much attention as possible. So now like I mentioned, now I'm opening it halfway. And yes, I use a three-step process. My brother likes to use a four-step process. I think they're both very good in their own ways. For the most part, I always use a three-step process first. And then if I feel the need to, I'll go ahead and use lever play and take out any faint lines that are created in between.
And if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, then go ahead and check out the video that we dropped on Monday that my brother did. I'll go ahead and link that right here as well. And how he uses the four step process when it comes to this last line. But do note how the three step process did work on this side of the head. Now when it comes to focusing on the back side of the head, since the hair does tend to get a little more coarse on the back side of the head of clients, in this particular client, I do have to use a four step process. You'll see right now. I started again with the lever completely closed and now here it's halfway open. Always think clean backgrounds, bro. And notice how there is a faint line right underneath it. I end up closing the lever just slightly right here and then remove that faint line. And finally, I open it up completely. And then I end up using mainly just the corners of the clipper to start blending out that last line. And finally repeat that same process on the opposite side. you'll notice that the three-step process works perfectly on the sides of the head and again when it comes to that last line using mainly the corners of the clipper if you haven't tried using the corners of the clipper guys I highly suggest you give it a try and see what it does now using my half guard i'm gonna go ahead and add lever play and this is when you step back and take a look at the client either from the mirror and just go ahead and start to remove any dark areas that you feel that still need to be faded out and close the lever as you need to as like again this is just going to vary from one side of the head to another now using my trimmers to start shaping up that temple peak area and giving them those C cups. And yes, my trimmers are zero gapped as well. Now using my trimmers in a forward position to get as close as possible to the scalp and go ahead and turn them around and remove that faint line that that creates. And about mid ear is where I start to remove that side hair. This usually gives me enough space to fade down the beard. And by using our trimmer in that forward position, we left a very faint line here. And that's going to be used as our guideline for our electric shaver. And if you're used to using your electric shaver in the very beginning of your fade guys, I highly suggest you try it this way. It's going to help you keep your fades as low as you want them to. I noticed when I first started cutting hair and I used to use the electric shaver in the very beginning, I would end up pushing my fades higher than I wanted to. So now using my electric shaver, and again, now you have that faint line to be used as a guideline. Just make sure that when you do approach that faint line that you start using mainly the corners of the shaver as if it was a clipper. That way you don't take the fade up any higher than you need to. And notice how I'm using my opposite hand to feel the direction of the grain just to ensure that I'm shaving against it at all times, especially when it comes to that neck area. And we're pretty much done with the fade guys. 
and using a three-step process but now backwards just to blend in the facial hair i start with the lever open go ahead and close it halfway and finish it off with it completely closed Go ahead and trimming his facial hair always ask your client to pull his lip in when it comes to trimming the facial hair just to make sure that you're covering the whole area and again this is where it's important that you watch our video on how we zero gap our trimmers and clippers that way you're not scratching as this lip area is a very very sensitive one so you want to make sure that you are zero gapping them the right way and I always use my electric shaver on the thicker areas before I do my actual razor work. And when it comes to the neckline, I always start in the middle and then work my way to one side. And then before I begin the opposite side, I kind of recalibrate from the middle again and then move my way to the side. Using my electric shaver on that neck hair. I personally like to use the electric shaver as I do have the option to shave against the grain on that neck hair area. You always want to consult with your clients first though because some are more prone to ingrown hairs than others. And as for the edge up, just start in the middle and then work your way to one side just like we did the neckline and then start in the middle and approach the opposite side very simple but you always want to be taking a step back just to make sure that you are going as straight as possible and as for the razors guys I always like to snap off the ends it makes it a lot easier to insert them in our Turkish blades which you can get at fadedculture.co guys are our, our matte razors super dope i love the contrast between the razor and the actual blade and when it comes to shaving i always like to begin with the thickest areas that's what we're beginning here at the mustache area and from there i work my way to his edge up shaving with the grain first and follow along that by shaving against the grain always using your opposite hand to stretch the skin just to ensure a softer shave And try practicing your reverse hand guys it just makes everything a lot faster and a lot easier for you that way you don't have to recline them just to start shaving against the grain on the forehead go ahead and dust off your client as much as possible guys seriously i mean that they're always gonna appreciate it you always want them to leave their chair and go about their day and here just adding a little bit of enhancements which on last week's video guys i went over how i dilute the semi-permanent hair dye so if you haven't checked that out go ahead and do so and finishing off the hair with a little bit of matte pomade here's the before guys And finally, here's the after, guys. My low fade with a very slight trim on top. I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial, guys. I hope y'all took something new from it. As always, let us know down in the comments which I would like for us to do next. If you made it this far, give this video a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.